New York City, where ambition pulsates at the speed of adrenaline. The city is a magnificent monument to human achievement, with its stunning array of skyscrapers and endless buzz of activity. Oddly though, for a city known for its landscape of asphalt, steel, and glass, New York has also gained notoriety for an activity whose roots are in the countryside. Every fall, weekend after weekend, the city hosts competition among thinly clad men and women who race across muddy fields and up an old cow path, weaving in and out among ancient trees and honoring a tradition a century old. New York is home to one of cross-country running's most famous courses, well known enough to have its own nickname, Vanny, Van Cortland Park. Hi, I'm Don Cardon. My greatest moment may have been my fourth place finish in the 1976 Olympics in Montreal, but my running life began on a cross-country course. One of my finest memories is of racing on this course in the 1968 NCAA Championships. My Stanford teammates and I almost captured the whole enchilada. And if a couple of guys had just run a little bit faster, ever hear that one before? Anyway, we were second in the nation. And I've never forgotten that race on this course. I'll be your guide for the next 20 minutes as Virtual Brands takes you from start to finish here in Van Cortlandt Park, across some fields, up and down some tricky hills, and finally on to the finish line. We hope that when you're done watching, you'll know this course better than the back of your hand. I'm not the only one who thinks this course is special. As cross-country expert Mark Bloom, publisher of the Harrier magazine has said, it's not paradise by any means. It may not have the prettiest or most difficult course, and it doesn't have the best facilities, but it lies smack in the middle of the most populous megalopolis in an area rich in cross-country tradition. Van Cortlandt Park is America's cross-country mecca. Okay then, welcome to Mecca. Van Cortlandt Park in the northwest corner of the Bronx was once a Mohegan Indian hunting and planting ground. The land was purchased in 1677 by Stephanus Van Cortlandt, son of a wealthy Dutch settler. The family mansion, built in 1748, is still on the property, the oldest building in the Bronx. Luminaries like Benjamin Franklin and George Washington once stayed here. Runners have been racing through the park for over a hundred years, since shortly after the Van Cortlandt family gave up farming and donated their thousand plus acres of fields and woods to the city. The cow path on the cross country course is more than a nickname. It's where actual four-legged bossies once rambled. Most of America's greatest runners have traveled that same path and generally faster than the herbivores that blaze the trail. The USA Nationals were last held at Van Cortlandt in 1990, the 100th anniversary of the meet. Bob Kempinen, later a U.S. Olympic marathoner, stopped Pat Porter's record streak of eight straight national titles that day, while Lynn Jennings, who earlier in the year had won the first of her three straight World Cross Country titles, was the women's champion. The great, and the soon to be great, have been making their marks here at Van Cortlandt for a century. But Vanny is also a destination for thousands of runners who, while they may never make an Olympic team, definitely love a good challenge. 8,000 high school runners converge here every year on the second Saturday in October for the Manhattan College High School Invitational. And the Foot Locker Regionals are a month later. And the New York Roadrunners Club keeps the place hopping with adult cross country. Clearly, you're never too young or too old to appreciate a good chase over hollowed ground. Mecca, indeed. It's fun to learn the history of a famous course like this one, but the main purpose of this video is to help you prepare to race here. You don't want to let the unknown get the better of you. Oh, 
are my teammates. Now that you've got this course video, racing at Van Cortlandt doesn't have to scare the wits out of you. Here's what sports psychologist and Springfield College cross-country coach Britt Brewer has to say about how to use it to improve your performance. Successful cross-country running is part physical and part mental. Daily training can get you physically ready to race, and this video can help train your mind. Imagery is one of the most powerful performance enhancement techniques available to athletes. It can give you a big edge in competition. After watching this video, you'll have a good idea of what the course looks like. You can take this information and tailor your training to match the specific demands of this particular course. While running, you can imagine the course. This type of visualization can turn any training run into a trial run on the Van Cortlandt Park course. In quiet moments, you can visualize the course and mentally rehearse your race plan. Think of your pace, your rhythm, your positioning, and also the physical sensations you expect to encounter during the race. By the time you get to Van Cortlandt Park, you'll have gone over the race dozens of times in your mind. Arm yourself with a positive attitude come up with positive statements to say to yourself as you run. I'm in control. I can handle this hill. I've paid my dues and I'm running strong. I can catch that runner. Plan to use these affirmations at key points on the course to combat the fatigue you're likely to encounter during the race. Knowing the important landmarks and where they occur on the course can help you focus your attention on running your best possible race. Knowing what to expect on race day can reduce your pre-race stress level and leave you confident of running your very best. A well-prepared mind can be a great boost to a well-prepared body. So let's get that brain of yours training and take a look at the Van Cortlandt course. Van Cortlandt Park on race morning should look pretty familiar to you, even if you've never raced here before. The scene is repeated at cross-country races all over the world. Runners warming up, stretching, lacing up racing shoes, doing wind sprints, and of course looking desperately for a little last minute relief. You know the scene. What you may not know is that Vanny can be almost as much of a logistical challenge before the race as it is an athletic challenge. Here are a few survival tips to keep in mind. One, this is Gotham, not the Burbs. So if you drive to Van Cortland, you'll find that parking can be a hassle. Plan to arrive early if you want to find a space, and be careful not to park in a tow-away zone. Or maybe your coach should drop you off and circle the Bronx for a couple of hours until you're done. That's a joke. Arrive early. Two, food may be more urban than you like. If you're looking for health food, or you've got a favorite pre-race meal, consider packing it in. Otherwise, you'll take your chances on Broadway, the street that's broken a thousand hearts and stomach. Three, Van Cortlandt is not an oasis of tranquility. It's a busy place with lots of other sports, most of them reminiscent of warfare, going on in the area where you warm up. Those burly guys will probably get out of your way when the racing starts, but don't count on it. Be prepared to play a little dodgeball. And while the cows may be gone from Van Cortlandt, horses remain. A riding academy and stables are nearby and there have been confrontations between runners and four-legged beasts over the years. So be careful where you run and where you step. <coughs> and finally, back to that desperate search for last-minute relief. Bathrooms on the site need something to be desired, and porta potties are limited. Don't be afraid to join the crowd in the woods. If you're a runner, you're different. This may be cross-country mecca, but it's not paradox. Be a good scout, be prepared. Speaking of preparation, let's get back to the main topic of this tape, visualization of the route. By the time you get to the park, you will have seen the course, virtually, thanks to the tour you're about to take, enough times to ease your anxiety. But it's always a good idea to scout things out in person. 
try to match your memories from this video to the actual course. If you have time for nothing else, at least study the last half mile of the course. You need to know exactly where the finish line is and what challenges, pitfalls, and opportunities you might face during the final meters of the race. No whining afterwards that some runner passed you because you thought the finish line was a little farther downfield. And remember to check in with your coach and teammates for any last minute thoughts, instructions, strategies, and maybe a final mental run through of the course. Here's a map of the 5K course. We've cheated a little in talking about the Van Cortlandt course because there are actually a number of different routes of different distances. All of them, though, use variations of a few basic sections included in the 5K course. Just make sure you know how those sections are put together on the specific course you'll be racing. The 5K course, like all the Van Cortlandt routes, starts and finishes in a section called the flat. The first mile makes a big sweep of the perimeter, then starts up the cow path right here. The narrow, twisting, undulating cow path is about 650 meters long. A couple of the Van Cortlandt courses take a sharp left off the cow path to include Cemetery Hill, but the 5K course isn't one of them. We'll talk about Cemetery Hill later on our visual tour. The top of the cow path will take you to a bridge across to the back woods or back hill section. There's over a mile of tricky ups, downs, and turns here, bringing you back to the bridge. It's a little over a half mile from there to the finish, back in the flats. That's the 5K course in a nutshell. One bit of strategic advice about Vanny. With nearly a mile of flats before the hills, it's easy to get pulled into a too quick early pace. You need to get in position, but don't overdo the early speed. Save some energy to manage the hills and that final long home stretch. 